Hi, welcome to the Earth Science Classroom, looking at subduction zones and earthquakes in the plate tectonics uh, series. Now, how these relate, obviously, if we're looking at geology, we're looking at the uh, tectonics of the Earth and how things move, when you smash rocks together, there's going to be friction, energy released, and earthquakes are that great example of uh, us experiencing the sheer awe and power of, of Mother Nature and Earth and the amount of energy that's stored inside the crust lithosphere that is just begging to be released. And in certain areas of the world, especially in subduction zones, uh, these earthquakes can be very, very large, very devastating, and can change human history as seen in, in, in the past uh, with like the Cascadia earthquake and megathrust. So this video is looking at why earthquakes occur in subduction zones and how, and we're going to look at the diagram and see the differences. So. Guys, welcome. All right, so welcome. This is looking at the different earthquakes. So I put in these green uh, X's, uh, S, I, and D, all right? It doesn't spell SID. What it does spell is the three zones uh, that we experience and see earthquakes occur in this subduction zone here with two plates meeting. Now, it generally is in uh, that well, earthquakes can occur both on the subducting slab or it can also occur uh, in the uh, plate that is not being subducted, the plate that has been uh, kept um, on top, basically. So we have the shallow, which is the S, which is from zero to 70 kilometers in depth, where we experience these shallow earthquakes. We have the intermediate the I, which is between 70 and 300 kilometers. Then we have the D, which is, stands for deep, obviously, uh, which is over or plus 300 kilometers. Now, we have experienced or seen through various seismographs, uh, earthquakes down to a maximum of around 700 Kilometers, but there is a limit because earthquakes happen where there is uh, brittle rock and rock where the elastic rebound theory can occur and release that energy through uh, through other. Uh, in this case, it's going to be dip slip, um, kind of like mega thrust type earthquakes, where if you go too deep in the earth, it actually gets too hot and the rocks become more ductile and don't act or behave in the same way. They're more bendy. Um, and become bent, then they do actually fracture and cause these earthquakes. So these are three classifications. And the guys we should really thank this information are Wadadi and Bial. These two gentlemen, these two scientists, kind of pioneered um, subduction zones and earthquakes, looking in the East Pacific. Now, Wadadi was a Japanese scientist, Binoff was an American scientist, and they kind of like both together pioneered uh, and found using seismographs uh, and seismograms um, the different depths of these earthquakes in the Eastern Pacific with subduction zones. Before this, uh, 1928 and 1949 uh, was enough. So they both collaborated different times, obviously working off each other's different research. But they found these deep uh, zone earthquakes around the Eastern Pacific and kind of led to more discoveries and more research into these convergent plate boundaries and what actually happens, how far the slab goes, different angles of the dip angles, and the resulting features that occur when you have different uh, degrees of dip angle for the slab. So we're talking to scientists as well. Oliver and Isaacs in 1967 kind of looked at the uh, Tongo-Fiji uh, trench and subduction zone there, and again, did more research on those deep earthquakes in that part of the uh, Eastern Pacific as well. You can also tie in Wilson, uh, Wilson cycle as well with the uh, active uh, plate margins. You can also link in uh, Hess with the seafloor spreading. So it all kind of works out uh, together. Also with Rifton as well, with um, Wilson, all these scientists kind of collaborated and, and kind of like gave us a bit a better picture of what's going on under the ground. 
So when we discuss the earthquakes in uh, subduction zones, looking at the thermobaric conditions, the pressure versus temperature conditions that keeps the rock either ductile and without much earthquakes or cold and uh, able to produce earthquakes when the energy is released, the seismic energy is released. So uh, also looking at the dipping zone, which is the angle, and the angle and the amount of uh, convection currents and the velocity uh, dictates how fast this slab is going to descend, and that would also uh, dictate the amount of earthquakes, because the faster the slab, the more friction, the more pull, they get stuck, the more energy is in, in, uh, included or involved in the rock, and they get generally larger earthquakes uh, with a faster, uh, less angled uh, slab. So there's a low angle, which is around 27 degrees, and there's a high angle, which is around 70 degrees. Now, generally, this is going to be the Western Pacific, uh, with this kind of Chilean type of um, uh, subduction zone. And then the high angle is generally going to be the Eastern Pacific, uh, which is um, actually, that is completely the wrong around. So this is the Eastern, or my East and West mixed up. East and the West. So the Eastern is Chilean and the Western is the Mariana. So those two types change and have different characteristics. We'll get onto that in a different uh, video. The low angle has generally more earthquakes, the high angle has generally less uh, and smaller earthquakes. So you have rock smashing against rock and you have the pressure, you have temperature, and you have this cold slab sending down and it's also going to squeeze against the lower mantle um, between the uh, you know, asthenosphere, mesosphere, boundary in some cases they see the slab can get and descend down to the core mantle boundary about 2890 kilometers down so there's different um research showing di different depths but most of the earthquakes are going to happen between zero the ocean floor and around you know 300 or 400 kilometers in depth so this area here in blue is the kind of locked zone where you have the different uh, plates kind of locking heads, bumping heads, so the locked zone. And this is kind of like the start of the seismogenic zone. This is where the start of the shallow earthquakes occur and then going down, again, based on the dipping zone and dipping range, the angle at which it descends down and, and sinks, um, and based on the temperature and pressure, which is thermobaric conditions, going to have these intermediate and deep um, area or deep zone uh, earthquakes occur. So you have this conditions which are based on the convection currents, the slab, uh, the speed, the angle and the composition. Uh, earthquakes can occur anywhere along this, this area um, of the slab and also of the above plate. So I hope this helps uh, with your studying. We're looking at the earthquakes in relation to subduction, how they occur, how they how they uh, work. One good thing to talk about is how to relate this to large, massive earthquakes that happened um, previously in Earth's history, was the Cascadia uh, earthquake or megathrust. Megathrust is where you have a very large section of subducting slab and the above plate. Uh, move and have create large displacement. And also look at this for the um, 2004 earthquake in uh, Sumatra in the Indian Ocean, where there's a 9.2 earthquake and basically caused this side of the plate to push up very quickly, very rapidly, and then thus pushing up the water and causing a very devastating tsunami. So this can be used in conjunction with your tsunami lessons, with your plate tectonics lessons, with your earthquake lessons, with your Earth's history lessons, and how that geology and Earth's history, uh, Earth science has affected uh, human race, uh, human uh, development, where we build, why we build in certain locations. And obviously, tsunamis are fantastic. Uh, subject to go into, and they're caused by these, these beautiful convection um, of 
convergent plate boundaries and these earthquakes. So there's lots to go, lots to go into, lots to divulge, but you should make sure that they understand how these are created and differences between the shallow and deep earthquakes um, in this diagram. Thanks so much.